I wasn't expecting that. It was a little more than I was expecting. Can you hear me now? <laughs> Barely. Hi, <laughs> John, Turn my hearing aid now. <laughs> My name is George Morgan, and I am humbled and honored to be able to serve as your president this year. So we're, I'm missing a couple of names of people, Rodney and, and Wilson. I don't know if you're, if you're here or not, but I need two other people. If they're not, there's Rodney. Um, Wilson's not, so I need someone else to come up and help us out. And we'll start off with Vicki. Let us pray. Gracious Father, we thank you so much for this day, for this beautiful sunshine and the blue skies and the food that you've laid before us. We ask that you please bless this club uh, through this new year and guide us to do beautiful and wonderful things for the community and bring smiles to people's faces. Uh, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Turn to your right. Your face the flag. Put your hand on your heart and start to pledge with me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we got a few milestones to start off the year. Uh, member birthdays, Ken White, January 1st. Ooh, you, hmm, you missed the tax deadline. Yeah, that boy. <laughs> Allison McKee, January 1st. Brian Derringer, January 5th. Karen Wilson, the 5th. And Ron Barrick, the 8th. Spouse's birthdays, Billy Stubblefield's wife, Netta. January 3rd, would that be today? Hmm. Uh, Laura Antoine's husband, Jim, January 7th. Anniversaries, Clark Thurman and Linda Scarborough, 38 years today. Rodney and Andrea Morales, 29 on the 5th, and Jim and Deborah Alvers, 42 on January the 7th. Club anniversaries, Phil Baker, that's a lot of years, 23 years, January 1st. Cat. One year, you're there, you made it. There you go. Where are you? <laughs> Amberly Kukowski, two years, January 6th. George, 14 years, January 6th. Derek McGill, 13 years, January 6th. And Wayne Nero, eight years, January 7th. Salud. Thank you very much, Dennis. Hey, Dennis, uh, got to play dual duty today. He actually set up all the AV for us well, yeah. um, for the very first time, so you got a crash course in that, and thank you very much for doing all of that. You did a great job. Brad, thank you for jumping in there, and, and even though you weren't scheduled to do it, and thank you, Henry, for the, the video. In case you all don't know, Henry does a video of each one of our meetings and, uh, and posts that on, on uh, YouTube, right? Very good. Whoever brought a guest, please uh, stand and introduce your guests. Do we need a mic? I probably don't need a mic. <laughs> Please welcome today Rotary and Paul Moore from the Rotary Club of Oklahoma City and his wife Judy, who are guests in our home for the next two or three days. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You're not allowed to find him. You're not allowed to find him. Just living on the edge. <laughs> Anybody any other guests? Any other visiting Rotarians? Oh, All right. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm a guest of Hector Martinez. I don't get to see him here today, but I'm Camilla Costa. Happy New Year, everyone. Thanks for having me. Um, I live in Georgetown now. Um, it's going on a couple of years, and so looking forward to meeting everybody and making new friends. <laughs> Welcome, thank you so much for being here. Any other guests or visiting Rotarians? Oh, Santa Claus is a guest back there. Sergeant at Arms, this is your minute. Oh, I won't go up there then. 
Uh, sometime in the last few weeks, somebody took the name badges out of the cabinet and failed to put them back together the way they're supposed to be. And as a result, when you lift the cases without the padding that was on the top of the pad, uh, the, the cases, the badges all fall out. Uh, somebody has got the two foam pads that were on top of the name badge case. Own up. <laughs> Unknowing. At any rate, beyond that, Happy New Year, everybody. Wear your, wear your pins next week. <laughs> Very good. Thank you so much. Membership, George. Okay, two quick things. Camille. Costa, please stand up again. Camille just introduced herself. Camille is a very delightful woman and has had her proposal for uh, membership uh, submitted. So she will be uh, presenting that to the board. It's over here for viewing if anybody wants to take a look at it or knows any deep, dark secrets about Camille. Let us know. Thank you. The other thing is, uh, over the past several months, I have been uh, speaking to you about easy ways to get the, the word out and about about rotary uh, things that are don't take a lot of effort but can be effective I'll just review so we're, we're on number four today but for review the first was license plate brackets we sold 30 of those and thank you for those that bought them and put them on and uh, drive around getting the rotary word out the second was old magazines take them to your doctor's office or your hairdresser put them with the other magazines that are there the third is that on each table you have brochures about Rotary. If there is a guest at your table, and not just today, but in the future, this is ongoing advice. Um, make sure that they leave with a Rotary brochure in their hands. The fourth today, which we haven't talked about, is your Rotary pen. Feel free to wear that, not just at meetings, but all through, during the day as you go about your business. If someone asks what that is, say that you're a member of Rotary, and this is a pen signifying membership. If they are curious and say, well, what is Rotary? The best explanation I have ever heard is one sentence. We are a group of retired and working professionals that want to give back, period. And I think that that's a very profound statement. We are a group of working and retired professionals that want to give back. If they're still curious and say, well, that sounds interesting to me, invite them to a meeting and we'll go from there. There's three more that we'll get to in the future. Thank you very much. George, thank you. Thank you so much, George. That was awesome. Now, I have one, one slight recommendation on the magazines, okay? You want this to be a professional presentation. Don't just, I know you don't want you to lift your name and address on it. That's understandable, but don't tear it off. <laughs> that looks pretty bad when you have a magazine with a quarter of the cover torn off of it. Um, we will actually put a sticker on there which has a stamp, which has our Rotary Club logo on it, and our website, so they get information about the Rotary Club of Georgetown right there. That will be on there. Um, we'll black out the information and put that on a, a, a sticker covering where your name and all that is supposed to be, or would have otherwise been. But that is a great suggestion, um, so keep doing that. Next slide. Early Act First Night. Many of y'all have been involved, many of y'all have seen these. Next Friday is the next one at Mitchell Elementary. See if you can put that on your schedule. It's early in the morning, 8.15 and 9.15, so they'll have two of them back to back. Um, please, if you can put that in your schedule, take the time to come out and come see what those kids are doing there. It is an absolutely amazing thing to see kids recognized for leadership, for character building traits that they have exhibited for the past month. So if you can do that, that would be absolutely awesome. Pearl Elementary will be on the 31st. Ramp build. Um, we do have a ramp build. Larry has a location, which I don't didn't have until just about 20 minutes ago. Yeah, we just got through. I'll, I'll give you the address next Friday. Okay. And we've already taken care of the issue of the phone call, the Spanish English. Fantastic. So, so Larry is going to is in need of a not today, but in for future is a tra Spanish translator, because many of the clients he gets to work with now are don't speak English, and that would just help him in communicating with them. So, if anyone be, are able to do that on a regular basis, let Larry know so he can have a, a 
several points of contact when he needs to talk to people. Ramp build this, this not tomorrow, but the following Saturday, 7.30, and we'll put out that information. The calendar, and, and one, I thank you all for being here. I, I, the, the, the dates for being off, you know, over Christmas holiday, we, it was kind of hard to figure out. We, um, we chose the date before Christmas, because we figured people were spending most of the time getting ready for Christmas, and, and, uh, and that's why we're meeting this, you know, instead of taking three weeks off, we're only taking two weekends off. But um, I do appreciate everyone being here, and thank you for that. Um, we've got regular meetings throughout the month. Um, the next big event on February 8th, the District Gala, District Foundation Gala. If you haven't signed up yet, go online to the district website, sign up for that. Um, who has signed up already to go? Steve? We have nobody else? Oh, Billy Ray's going to be upset at y'all. <clears throat> George Ann's going to be going. Anyone else planning on going? Hasn't signed up yet? Jim, you're not going to. Jim normally goes almost every year. Not going to be able to. All righty. Then also on um, April 3rd, annual invitational golf tournament. Neither Jeff nor uh, Nathan are here, but uh, that is our uh, one of our really big fundraisers we have. Oh, there, there's Jeff. I'm sorry, Jeff. Anything you want to say about that, real quick? Fantastic. Look forward to that. That's always a really great time of fellowship. Um, and then Celebration of Clubs will be down in, in Bernie, Texas, May 1st, 2nd, and 3rd. So put that on your calendar. Now, without any further ado, Felix Boston, our main program for today. Good morning, everybody. My name is Felix Boston. You guys know me. And this is Thelma Boston. She's a 10-year-old yellow English lab. An English lab is about two inches shorter than a regular American lab. She's got the short nose, the blocky head, and... <laughs> And, and she's blonde, so she forgets a lot of things. <laughs> so, first slide, please. This, in California, for about seven years, she was a pet hug therapy dog for for Tony LaRusso's Art Animal Rescue Foundation, which is really a big deal out there. And Tony LaRusso, you know him, a big baseball guy, and had millions of dollars. We did that, so we went to hospitals, retirement homes out in California. Next. This is a, a picture. One day a, a month we would go to a new $55 million library in Walnut Creek and little kids would read to the dogs. And supposedly that really helped the kids learn to read. The interesting thing was all the kids that came were Eastern Indian and Asian kids because those parents wanted their kids to do really well, so they really recognized how, how important that was reading to the dogs, and I thought that was pretty interesting. Next slide. Okay, these are some pictures of we took in, in the <clears throat> hospital in Walnut Creek, Kaiser Hospital. This little girl, I noticed her dad, she was in there with her dad, he had had an operation, and uh, he, he had motorcycle gear, and I said, what kind of bike do you ride? And he said, well, I named my daughter Harley. <laughs> so this, this little girl's Harley. Next slide. And Harley loved Thelma. She really loved Thelma. Next slide. And also there was an area where people were waiting for their relatives to come in out of the uh, operation room. So we would talk to those people too because they, they really enjoyed the dogs because they were apprehensive about their, their relatives. Next slide. This lady had two labs at home, and I had a hard time getting Thelma away from this lady because she loved Thelma so much since she missed her own dogs. Next slide. 
This lady just loved to talk to Thelma when we'd go in there. <clears throat> Next slide. This lady couldn't speak any English. I don't know what language she spoke, but she was in bed. The dog came in. She got out of bed, crawled on the floor, loved and hugged and kissed, swapped spit, and had a wonderful time with Thelma. <laughs> Next slide. And this is a picture of Thelma. She came to my insurance office every day and she would entertain the clients and she and this little boy just had a, <laughs> just really enjoyed each other. Usually little kids would they'd go after her and you know, give her a hard time, but this little kid, she loved this little boy whenever he would come in. Next slide. Uh, and we'd go see senior people and also uh, young kids in, in the hospital. Next slide. This lady loved Thelma. Loved to pet Thelma in the bed. Next slide. This, this gentleman here, he didn't talk or anything. He saw Thelma, leaned back, closed his eyes, put, on, put his hand on her head and rubbed her head for about 10 minutes. Just, just precious. Next slide. <clears throat> this little boy, you can see something on his neck. We could never ask, you know, tell a client that was in the hospital and say, man, what happened to you? You look terrible. But, uh, <laughs> we couldn't do that. Next slide. Another little girl pet, pet and Thelma. Next slide. This is my favorite all-time slide in the whole world of Thelma. This little lady, 103 years old, sitting there talking to Thelma, and Thelma's sitting there hanging on every word she said. And I don't know if it was because Thelma knew she was old and she was smart and had, was listening to what she was saying, or if it was the food that was on the tray table in front of her. <laughs> I love that picture, just hanging on every word she said. Next, next slide. This is at the skilled nursing, is it what, here in, in the Williams? A friend of mine in California, this is her aunt, so Thelma and I go see her every so often. You can see Thelma likes to dress up. She's got her, one of her salsa skirt <laughs> dresses on. She's got several salsa skirts, a couple of uh, pink tutus. Next slide. And sometimes we both dress up. Who knows? <laughs> I've got my top hat on. Next slide. This was in the newspaper a couple of three days ago in uh, Georgetown, the Sun News. Helen Kaufman, I think it is. She loved Thelma, loves Thelma. And <laughs> you can tell the smile on her face. We have, a, when we go to Wesleyan, Estrella at Wesleyan, we have a list of clients, of, not clients, but people that live there who want to see Thelma. So we go around that list, and when we walk in, you know, knock on the door, and then walk in, they're just so happy to see Thelma. Just so happy. It's really, really makes you feel good. Next slide. There's Thelma with her pink tutu on. <laughs> and people say, well, isn't it going to fall off? I said, no, her big old thick tail keep it on. keeps it on. Next slide. And... <laughs> Thelma isn't only for the people that live there. This is Thelma's there for the people that work there. And this is Marissa, yeah, love. She would get down on the floor and, and hug and oh, she loved Thelma. But she doesn't work there anymore. But she'll be back. Next slide. This is a good slide of Thelma. She's also, since I do construction work on my houses, she helps. Yeah. <laughs> And here you can see we're painting some doors at the little farmhouse I have. And uh, she does pretty good, but she gets paint on her a lot of times. I tried everything to get this picture to have her hold the brush. <laughs> I threatened her, I bribed her, nothing. But you wouldn't do it, would you, Thelma? <laughs> Sat there looking at me. Next slide. And if any of you live around D.B. Woods, close to... Uh, the H-E-B out there, you'll probably see Thelma and I on her motorcycle. That's her motorcycle with her doggles on. She loves to ride. But Thelma has been through 42 weeks of doggy school. Like I said, she's blonde. She forgot a lot of it. She went through a six-week canine good citizen, which you learn to do like around people like she is now. And... Uh, and she could, she's old enough, she could live in Sun City, but she chooses not to. 
Next slide. Okay. Thelma likes to keep up on current events. Well, recently she's been watching TV, the impeachment proceedings. After she watches it for a while, she comes and hides. <laughs> and I think that's the last one. Now we'll go to the second, second set of, uh, do you want to sit up there or you want to go sit by Ron? What do you want to do? Yeah. You want to sit there? Well, lay down. <coughs> lay down. Come on, down. Come on. Down. <laughs> okay, you sit there then. Okay. <laughs> Rotary. <clears throat> why did you, why did you join Rotary? Why did you join Rotary? Why did you join Rotary? Everybody has a different idea of why they joined Rotary. Well, something happened to me two or three months ago, and I'll get into it more as, as we go on, which really made me cognizant of what Rotary does for mankind. Okay, first slide. <clears throat> Why do people join Rotary? You know somebody in Rotary? That's what happened to me. I was in San Ramon, California. A good friend of mine was in Rotary. I've been in uh, Lions Club. The club was getting really going downhill, Mr. Rodents, and then this is great camaraderie and everything. You want to join a great organization, we've all heard about Rotary International, right? Largest service organization in the world. Okay, number three, you want to give something back to the community. That's the way I feel. I made my money as an insurance agent off of the community, so I wanted to give something back to the community. Okay. <coughs> Maybe get some business out of it. You don't join Rotary to get business, but you get a little bit, but you don't join purposely for that. Make new friends. I mean, that's one reason I joined Rotary when I moved here from California. I, didn't, I, I knew my realtor. That's all I knew. And they didn't really want to associate with him in public. But anyway, <laughs> so I wanted to make new friends in Rotary. I would never have known Ron if I hadn't have, well, this is not a good example. <laughs> Camaraderie, because you, wherever you go, you see Rotarians, and, and you have camaraderie. And then, too, some people join for the meatloaf. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be at the Christmas party to get that joke. Okay, next, next slide. Polio statistics, I apologize, it's kind of hard to read, so I'll read for you. And these statistics I got from the polio people at Rotary International about a week ago, so they're pretty darn current. It started to eradicate polio in 1985. So how many years is that? 23? No, 30, 30 yeah, quite a few. <coughs> Rotarians will have contributed over $2.7 billion by the time it's over. 2.7 billion. This is not just a little lunch group that meets once a week, is it? If you can donate 2.7 billion dollars. Think about that. That's amazing. Bill and Melinda, how do you pronounce it? Gates White. Okay, look how much money he has. And he's donated. They almost says, it's getting boring, I'm going to sleep. <laughs> He's then donated 1.3 million. How many, how many billions does he have? But anyway, he sees the need for this. Currently, 101 cases of wild polio in Pakistan and 24 cases in Afghanistan. I'm assuming wild cases means brand new cases of polio were 241 cases of vaccine-derived polio in the range of continents. I'm assuming you know, when you go get a I don't think this, but a, a flu shot, you get a little bit of case of flu, and I'm assuming that's probably the same situation here. Okay, what exactly is polio? Polio is a paralysis, paralyzing and potentially deadly infectious disease, but most commonly affects children under the age of five. Okay. <clears throat> the virus spreads from person to person, typically through contaminated water and then attack the nervous system. That's why George is pushing his fresh water initiative, right? 
Very, very important. <clears throat> because I knew a couple people when I was growing up that had polio, but not, it wasn't something, you know, that you saw every day. But I'm going to show you something the other day that in a few minutes it just brought it all together. Next slide. Okay, who are we? There's five main groups of people in fighting polio. <clears throat> there is the World Health Organization, we've heard of that, International Rotary, and then Centers for the Disease and Prevention, and UNICEF, and then the Gates family. So there's five main players in this, and Rotary is number two, so that tells me we're the second in line for the amount of money we donate. Okay, next slide. <coughs> so like I said, the five four partners we just discussed, 200 countries are involved, 20 million volunteers, over 2.5 million children are vaccinated. How many people in here are old enough to remember, and I, did, I remember in the, through, I guess the mid to late 50s, standing in line on the sidewalk, going into a, a grade school in Plainview, Texas, to take the sugar cubes. How many people remember that? Yeah, I remember that. U.S. has $17 billion international development. The goal is a polio-free world. Now, you think about this, how much Rotary has done to eradicate polio, right? What is our next objective for Rotary? World peace, right? So who's, who's to say what we're doing now in the world peace? You know, that's what, they, that's what all the women at the uh, uh, beauty contest is. What do you want to see? I want to see world peace. Well, it might come about. Next slide. Okay, here's some slides I've pulled off the internet. We've all seen these pictures. But, and, and like I said, polio doesn't really, we see it on pictures like this. It's not in our face. And I'm going to show you in a minute how it got in my face a few months ago in Georgetown. Okay? Look at this little boy. How old is he? Seven, eight? Isn't that terrible? Okay, next slide. This little girl, probably a little bit younger. Next slide. Look at this. The nurse is giving him a cigarette in the iron lung. Okay. The next slide is going to bring a tear to your eye. Okay, next slide. This is from the 1930s, a little baby in an iron lung. George, if you have somebody that's thirsty in Rotary, you could show them that picture and say, because of Rotary, we don't have this. We don't have this anymore. Look at that. Next slide. Okay, how many people have been to Hog Alley? <laughs> now we got a couple. No, you haven't been to Hog Alley. <laughs> you haven't been, have you been to Hog Alley? <laughs> well, we want to hear about that story. <laughs> so anyway, about three or four months ago, I needed a new set of tires for my Harley because I'm going to go with a buddy of mine who's a director at Dell Computer. And I went over there and walked in the door, and there it was. There it was. Next slide. They have an iron loan built in the 50s, last used in the 80s. And when I told her, I said, Rotor is about 40 or plus, she said, well, you can borrow it to take it to your Rotor meeting. So it's supposed to be sitting right here. <clears throat> Last week when I said, I've got a date, I'm going to come get it. Well, what if you scratch your to hurt it because we want to sell it. I said, here's my credit card. If there's a scratch on it, I'll pay for it. Well, she still wouldn't let me do it. And which was really sad because, I mean, it is really gripping when you see that big yellow monstrosity right in front of you. Yeah, we could have had the meeting there. 
Very good. <laughs> so the reason I put Martha's number name on there is you can go look at it. She's only open, I think, Tuesday and Wednesday. They're not open that much. Well, you probably know, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> but call before you go. Thank you. Next slide. <sighs> Built in the 50s. Last years in the 80s. I mean, it's, it's big. You're not going to move it around very easily. Next slide. This tells a little bit of information at the very top of it. There was a telephone number and it said, for service, call this number. <laughs> okay, so I should call the number then. Out of business, thank God. Next slide. And I opened up these doors and they have it where you can put your hand through and there's kind of a rubber thing around it so the air doesn't escape if you need to do something to the person medical attention or whatever. Yeah. But I, I challenge you everybody to go over and look at that and you'll see it just, you stand there and look at it and you can't breathe because you look at that and all the human trauma that's associated with one of these things. And because of rotary, we don't have them anymore. Think about that. Next slide. This is the last slide. This is the very end of it. It's a big billows. It's made out of leather. And she said they plugged it in. It still works. So if anybody, you know, if you do want to buy one, buy this and put it in your living room. So you want $1,500. Any buyers? <laughs> Danny moved his hand. And then you can do it by hand or plug it in electric, electric with electricity. But I was hoping to have it here because it really makes a difference how big that thing is and how the, I mean, the human trauma when you look at it when it's sitting right there in front of you. But uh, <laughs> to go to sleep, Thelma. <laughs> so does anybody have any questions on uh, pet therapy or polio plugs? Yes, sir. Try to get out early. Yes. Is, this, is this my first time ever? Or maybe <laughs> yeah, probably right. So let, it <laughs> oh, let, it, let it happen. No, no, stop it. Okay. Well, please stand and join me in reciting the four-way test. <laughs> well, the things we think, say, or do. First, is it true? Second, is it fair talk or sir? Third, will it build goodwill and better friendships? And fourth, will it be beneficial to all concerned? We are adjourned. <laughs>